Now I'm going to share with you, as I mentioned, that it's customizable and adaptable name. What does it mean? And I drive my team crazy sometimes because we are developing some tools on this, is that you've got to live up to that name. That means almost everything we do in project management must be customizable and adaptable. What I'm sharing with you right now, I'm going to share it with you about maybe four or five slides. Uh, February last year, we did a workshop in Dubai and a workshop in Abu Dhabi, and we introduced this model in one hour or two hours in a morning session like this. Then we had a lunch break, and after the break we came and we grouped people by audience, by industry. Construction guys alone, IT people alone, learning people alone, and we asked them, that, can you, after one hour presentation only, okay, customize this model for your industry? And this is unedited exactly as those guys, obviously they put it in handwriting, so we just put it into a, Word, into a PowerPoint slide. This is a learning example that uh, a couple of the people were involved that did this. Said, How do you go through a learning program? Okay. Now again, this is unedited, so maybe there's mistakes in here, but what we are trying to say, after only one hour, okay, people on their own were able to go and define and change the map to fit their needs. Like here, proposals, define objective, define strategy, develop content structure, develop activities and assessment, implementation and testing, and then accreditation and marketing before you can start to enroll students. This is one approach. Another one from construction. Uh, obviously, in this case, they kept the top model as is. They kept the bottom. They made some what happened here. They included more stages. Okay. So just more steps in the, in the process they include here. Okay? Uh, again, we don't need to study this. I just want to show you how can we people immediately adjust the model. This has come from sales and marketing. Uh, usually, in our main model, feasibility study is the first things we do, is under the studies. Okay? But here, they, they put research, analyze research as a, as a step before uh, for sales and marketing, and then uh, you have uh, strategic planning, define the objective, detailed tactical planning. Another one from IT, okay? Uh, the business requirement, the project management plan, the as-is process, the to-be process, the solution design, the application development, the testing, the go-live. And again, this is another way of people who are able to customize this. And this is from, from uh, an airline, but marketing uh, an individual. This one individual did this as part of our master class. Uh, and basically, she put, at how do you look at a marketing campaign? Uh, and notice, for us, we put launch as an early stage. In this, in this case, because she was talking about the marketing campaign, she referred to the term launch, okay, as launching the marketing campaign, so it came later versus before. Again, all I'm trying to show you here is that this is there, it's in the public domain, it's outside, you can go look at our website, you can look anywhere, and then you can start to play with something like this and adapt it to your need. And often enough, in one hour discussion, we can sit down and start to draw something. <clears throat> but these are the things that help us manage a project. That's how we can learn from each other and to be able to implement a system that allow us to be able to reflect the organization system and culture. Now, shifting from managing a single project to organizational project management, what is it about? Organizational project management is about, similar to the slide that Luke had earlier, doing the organization project right. Meaning what? Meaning making sure we are doing the right projects first. Obviously, you do not want to do any project. You would want to be able to be selective on the project you do. This is a project that are aligned to your strategic objective. And then, how are we going to ensure we do with them right? You give this model to two, three project managers within the same company, somebody might love it and they do a great job, and somebody might hate it and say, no, I have a better idea, I know how to do it better than this, or I know I have some other system, it's in my head, I don't need anything like this. Okay? And probably that person is quite successful, no question about it. However, how do we ensure that the people who have a lot of experience in project management and organization, and the people who might be new to project management, and the people who might be learning project management or maybe have some experience, but in one methodology versus another. 
in the organization, how do we ensure consistency? And that's the role of organization project management, to look for a consistent approach. Now, when I say consistent, I don't mean one size fits all. What, you, what is consistent has to be the key principles. What are the principles of managing project? The governance, if you wish, you want to establish for managing project. And then you give the freedom for different division to do customized things to their need. But that doesn't then, once it's customized for the need of a division, that doesn't mean now every project manager go and do it their own way. Now we have to have some compliance. So in project management, is not totally loose. You have to have some systems in place. And of course, you leave a lot of room for creativity and innovation along the way. Otherwise, this system is too rigid. But you have to draw the line what is customizable and what is not. So basically, you have to say, this is flexible. You can change it any way you want to. But this is a principle you don't touch. It's like any person and your values. Your values should not be changed based on circumstances. In project management, the principle should be fixed. What variable, the name, the structure a little bit. Are you going to have one more, one more than one gate or less gate? Are you going to have more stages or less stages? Okay, all is dependent on what you need as an organization. <coughs> so what are the essential, if we look at organization maturity, I'm just going to throw this in here and leave it for now. I'll come back to it later. That's the model we came up with. That is a, we think it's a simplified model. I have to be careful of stressing the word simplified, not simple. Okay? We stress the word simplify, simplifying excellence in our logo, simplified methodology, simplified system, not simple. I mean, ideally, we'd love to have everything to be simple, but life is not you know, too simple every, in every situation. So we try to simplify things as much as we can compared to some of the models that are out in the market. But I'll come back to explain this in more detail. <clears throat> we call this the element of project management maturity. So what is? What does it mean? What is maturity in project management? Okay. First, let's define what is organizational project management. Because when we talk about maturity, we're talking about organizational project management maturity. So what is organizational project management? Some people call it enterprise project management. Some people call it strategic project management. Okay? Different names probably mean the same thing. And bottom line, what it means, organization project management, is the management of project for the organization, which include managing projects, managing programs, managing portfolio, uh, basically trying to bridge the gap between strategy formulation and execution using principles of program management and project management. It encompasses basically all of the above, plus the term PMO. Some of you might have we have already discussed that term. We talk about maturity. So when we talk about organization project management, in simple term, we're talking about project, program, portfolio, project management office, program management office, project management maturity, these, some of the name will come up. Now, maybe I should stop here and define the word organization. By organization, we don't mean a company. We use the term organization to mean two different things. One, the term organization could mean that is any organization, such as a company, a nonprofit organization, or a government agency. So from that higher level, the term organization could refer to a company for business, profit company, versus a nonprofit uh, uh, NGO, versus a government agency. Then, if we look within the same organization, whether it's a ministry or a nonprofit organization or for profit company, within the same company or organization, we might have different organization. A department is an organizational unit. A business line is an organizational unit. So the term organization here refer to any organizational unit, whether it's small or big. Obviously, for a small company, the whole organization is one. For large organizations, some, such as some of the, the companies you represent, organization could be a business line. 
with which mean that business line have some autonomy in some decision about how they manage their own projects. Okay? So the term organization here could refer, ideally it refers to the whole company or the whole government agency or whatever versus division, but it could also represent division or business unit. So that is our view of organization project management. Now what is a PMO? Because that is usually very relevant to the question here. What is a P? Is it project? Is it program? Is it portfolio? Okay, and many organizations different. If I ask you, probably, some of you probably use the term program. Use program, right? You have the term, you don't use the term PMO. Anybody use the term PMO? No. And you use project? Uh, as, as a term program, but mainly it's a mix of all. Yeah, but as a term, what do you use it called? When you say the PMO, is it the project management office or program management office? Program. They're using the term program. And it's not, you know, five years ago we would not hear the word program, it's mostly projects. So it's emerging, it's changing. Uh, yeah, ideally it could be project or program, or it could be one and to represent all three. What is the O? Office or officer? Uh, I've been to organizations said, you have a PMO? I said, yeah, uh, tell me about your PMO. Why don't you ask him? He's sitting right there. And who was that? It was end up the secretary of the manager. And the job of the guy was to collect information from the different team members to give it to the manager in a single report. Some organization look at the PMO as a single consultant. I mean, in this case, it was a person, more like clerical. In other case, it may be a consultant. Okay, one consultant. The PMO is one consultant only. <coughs> Base, bottom line, PMO is an organizational unit, is not a person. Okay? Now, is it temporarily or permanent? We always run into this question. Uh, if the PMO is for a specific program or project, then obviously it's temporarily. When the program is finished, the PMO is done. Because it's like, in this case, the PMO is really functioning as a project management team or a program management team. When the program is finished, PMO is done. However, when we use the term PMO, we typically refer to a permanent organization that is responsible for the project management function within an organization.